Russian army equips its tanks with a special air defense system against Ukrainian drones. After deciding that so-called grills were not enough to protect Russian tanks from drones, Russian armed forces began to put soldiers with hunting rifles on their armor, Russian propagandist channels reported. Once Ukrainian Baba Yaga type of attack drones used by Ukrainian military discovered our tank because it had warm barrel that did not cool down, Russian propagandists explained. For this, the tank crew has a shooter. He watches the sky. For their part, air defense personnel, who have to sit on the tank with virtually no protection, do not seem to be happy about their role, as effectiveness of such a dangerous way of protecting armored vehicles from enemy drones leaves much to be desired. We need to train constantly. It's not as simple as it seems, admitted one of the shooters. Baba Yaga is very fast. It's very difficult to hit her. At the same time, sometimes these tank defenders look so ridiculous that they become objects of ridicule even among Kremlin propagandists. More than two-thirds of the Russian tanks that Ukraine's military has destroyed in recent months have been taken out using first-person view FPV drones, a NATO official told Foreign Policy, an increasing sign of Kyiv's reliance on the unpiloted aircraft as it awaits more artillery ammunition from the United States and other Western countries. With much-needed funding and artillery rounds held up in Washington, the Ukrainian military has largely turned to FPV drones to carry out anti-tank attacks. Ukrainian troops operate the drones via a controller and are able to watch the machine's suicide attacks on Russian vehicles through video feeds which now play on a loop on Ukrainian social media channels on Telegram and other platforms. The all-out use of cheap drones indicates that the Ukrainians are turning to increasingly desperate measures to improvise weapons to fight back the Russian assault. Biden doesn't rule out sending U.S. troops to Taiwan in case of Chinese invasion. The United States may deploy its troops to Taiwan in case of a Chinese invasion, according to U.S. President Joe Biden, not ruling out U.S. military force. There's a distinction between deploying on the ground, air power and naval power, etc., Biden said. According to the president, it would depend on the circumstances. I've made it clear to Xi Jinping that we agree with, we signed on to previous presidents going way back to the policy of that we are not seeking independence for Taiwan or will we, in fact, not defend Taiwan if China unilaterally tries to change the status. And so we're continuing to supply capacity. And we've been in consultation with our allies in the region, added Biden. Taiwan considers itself to be a separate state, but China calls the island part of its territories. Beijing calls the Taiwanese authorities separatists and threatens them with war. In particular, China has recently resorted to intimidating Taiwan again, promising to destroy the island's independence by force. It should be noted that the United States provides Taiwan with assistance, including military aid. Therefore, against this backdrop, the conflict between the United States and China is also escalating. China has also recently conducted large-scale military exercises near Taiwan with simulated attacks. Chinese Defense Minister Dong Jun has said the country's military was ready to forcefully stop Taiwan's independence in a fierce speech at a Singapore Security Forum. Speaking at the Shangri-La Dialogue Conference in Singapore, Dong said the self-ruled democracy of Taiwan was the core of core issues for China, but claimed Taiwan's governing Democratic Progressive Party was incrementally pursuing separatism and bent on erasing Chinese identity. China views Taiwan as its own territory and has not ruled out the use of force to achieve unification. Those separatists recently made fanatical statements that show their betrayal of the Chinese nation and their ancestors. They will be nailed to the pillar of shame in history. Dong said, The Chinese People's Liberation Army has always been an indestructible and powerful force in defense of the unification of the motherland and it will act resolutely and forcefully at all times to curb the independence of Taiwan and to ensure that it never succeeds in its attempts, Dong told. Isolated Russia after Putin's death to face disintegration process. Serhii Plokhi, professor and director of the Ukrainian Research Institute of Harvard University, believes that after Vladimir Putin's death, isolated Russia will experience a very difficult period during which disintegration can become part of its history. He says after Putin's death, 
A brutal period may follow for an isolated Russia with the possibility of disintegration. Changes in the country can be aimed at improving relations with Europe and restoring ties in the global market. President of Ukraine Zelensky calls Putin dangerous, noting his extraordinary nature and inability to stop. Relations between Russia and Ukraine, compared to the First World War, have more in common with the aggression of Hitler's Germany in Europe. After the death of a tyrant or dictator, there is always a period of selection and struggle for power among the heirs, and political changes can be significant. It may or may not happen. But war is a crisis, and it is clear that this war cannot continue after Putin because it is not in the interests of many people, including Russian business. There will be changes, there will be some tectonic upheavals, and from this point of view, such countries or such parts of Russia, such as Chechnya, which de facto already function almost as independent, can leave. Russia is Kadyrov's tributary and not the other way around, he said. I do not believe that this generation of Russians will prefer, say, a vacation in Beijing over a trip to Paris. A kind of rollback and a return to rebuilding bridges with Europe will begin because at their peak in terms of education and other things, the Russian imperial and modern elite focused on Europe. Plocky said, according to him, after the death of a de facto tyrant or dictator type leader, there is always a particular choice and struggle between his heirs and none of them will be strong enough to continue a policy that is so harmful to Russia itself. This is a historian's view. We cannot look into tomorrow. We can only make assumptions. This is the most likely scenario from the point of view of the history of Russia in the last 100 years. How there were changes from Lenin to Stalin. How, after Stalin's death, there was competition between the heirs. This is an opportunity for totalitarian regimes to change course, he added.